Hi. Very often when I'm doing teardowns and things, I want to take uh, high-res photos of PCBs. And for those who don't know, I have a Flickr account. I'll link that in down below. And that's where I upload uh, most of my, like, teardown photos that I do. If you see a, a particularly involved teardown, I usually, like, often take photos as I'm actually going, and I'll just dump all the raw images onto my Flickr account, all in full resolution, uh, so you can download those to your heart's content. And sometimes it's often quite tricky to get good photos of uh, PCBs. Like you can see at the moment, we're getting reflections from my overhead lights and, you know, on, on shiny uh, metal can surfaces and stuff like that. And if your light's not at the right angle, you can't read uh, some of the writing on the chips and things like that. This board's, uh, you know, fairly good in that respect. But you've seen that on many of my videos where you just can't read the part numbers if the no light's not at the right angle and it's, you know, you've got to tilt the board under my microscope to read things. And so most of the time I just like rely on uh, just my regular lights that I've got here, my overhead uh, lights plus my two uh, studio lights that I uh, use either side of me. I'll switch it off. There you go. There you go. So it just gives extra uh, light in front. And if you want to see, I'm getting about, there you go, 1900 lumens or something like that on the bench, which is, you know, pretty good for taking uh, fairly decent photos. And this is the camera that I use, or more particularly uh, the lens. It really doesn't matter about the body. I've got many uh, Sony cameras that this uh, lens fits. This is a one to one uh, 30 millimeter macro lens. And um, yeah, it works really good for macro photography. And, you know, it gives like nice nice dimensions, they're not uh, distorted or anything like that, but lighting is the real pain in the butt. But often I don't have time to prep and set up a proper shot, so I'll just get my camera and just hold it manually over the top and just press the shutter and just, you know, hope it all works and, you know, ah, it's good enough for Australia, that kind of thing. But often I want really good, uh, good quality shots of uh, PCBs and products and things like that. And for products, I probably don't have a wide enough lens here, but yeah, I've got one of these gigantic oh, <laughs> light tents. It is absolutely enormous. So obviously, um, if this was designed for shooting like big products, you can get smaller ones and, and things like that. And the whole idea is that you put your studio lights, like you usually have it closer than that, diffuses the light and everything, and you have like a white uh, backdrop or different color backdrop, whatever you want to use. And then you can get nice, evenly lit product photos and things like this. But in my tiny little lab here, this is just like insane. So I almost never go to the light tent effort to do anything. So bugger it, I thought what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct my own uh, little light box just for like smallish PCBs, anything up to like, you know, 20, 30 centimetres, uh, something like that. Be okay for product uh, shots, like front on product shots and stuff like that. But anyway, I want a nice evenly lit box. So uh, you want good quality LEDs for something like this. So what I've got, these are called corn cob uh, studio lights. <laughs> this one's been ripped apart and here's all the well, most of the uh, guts out of this one, these are uh, UG lead. And UG lead is a manufacturer of really high quality, uh, high CRI or high color rendering index uh, lead. So you can buy the individual leads on reels, you can buy the individual strips, or you can buy them in finished products like these corn cob leads. And I've got uh, my old studio lights, uh, which I have down in the bunker at the moment. I've got um, four of these uh, corn cob lights. They're 36 watts each. So this is the uh, latest model. It's got, uh, there's leads on the front and leads on the side all the way around like that. And it's got like an aluminium uh, housing. I don't know full aluminium. I haven't actually taken this thing apart yet, but this is an older model uh, one, which I had. So I thought I would steal the leads out of these. Look at this. This one's actually a plastic uh, body and there's the uh, mains converter in there. It just connects down to the main socket and this is, you know, so this is all plastic and they've just got uh, the leads on the metal strips. But these are really high quality uh, studio leads. These have a uh, CRI, color rendering index, greater than 95. So absolutely superb. So you'll get great colors in your shots. You want, that's the sort of number that you want, like 95 plus if you're really serious about your uh, photography and things like that. So they've got uh, 10 leads here and there's 14 strips of these, aluminium uh, backed of course, but they don't go onto a larger heat sink. So obviously this is adequate uh, dissipation. And of course, 
these LEDs are then uh, diffused inside the uh, studio light. The studio light has a big uh, reflector system in it and then a big uh, diffuse sheet on the front where the uh, light comes out. So it's lots of, uh, really nice diffuse light and that's what you want for product photography. You want nice diffuse light coming from all directions. And anyway, um, so these will be top quality LEDs and they happen to be already be in nice little strips like this. You might think that they're all in series but if you actually have a look yes once again got to get the light at the right angle <laughs> to see this bloody white solder mask unbelievable but it looks like there's two leds in series and then they're all in parallel you know roughly like you know, a three volt drop for a white uh, lead like this roughly and so we should get a, like a total of a six volt drop on one of these uh, strips so I can uh, construct a light box with um, a whole bunch of these LEDs like around the outside and maybe some reflective coating material in it and that should be really nice if we can uh, surround the board that we are photographing with these LEDs so I'm thinking like a big uh, cardboard box uh, type thing you know maybe about this high or something like that and that'll depend on the uh, focal length of your lens and you know how close you want to get in the field of view and everything else but yeah basically on the uh, top maybe uh, like just surround it with uh, you know a whole bunch of LEDs so light comes in from all different angles and then possibly uh, coat the internal surface of the cardboard box with a reflective uh, owl foil or something. And so, you know, the light just bounces around in there and just evenly lights everything and then have a hole in the top so you can stick your camera through the box that's all lit up evenly inside and take your photo. <laughs> that's the plan anyway. All right, so I just got a strip uh, powered up here, and whoa, it is bright. And uh, highest, uh, set it to the highest compliance uh, voltage here. Yeah, 32 volts there, um, because it'll drop whatever uh, voltage uh, particular current. Half an amp sounds like, I don't know, you know good enough value. It's, phew, it's really bright. Don't know if it's over doing these LEDs or not. I don't have a data sheet for them. Oh, I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, 2.92. And then total across, oh, well, we've already seen the total voltages on our power supply. So, uh, yeah, 5.9 volts for the entire strip because there's two LEDs in series, roughly three volts each. So there you go, six volts per strip. So I believe all these strips were actually wired. Oh, it's too bright. Were actually wired in uh, series. So obviously our converter, in, including this uh, front one as well, that's probably maybe the equivalent of two strips, is it? See the pattern on that. But yeah, it's probably got like, you know, 16 strips total of... 10 LEDs. So 6 volts uh, total drop for one strip times a 16, if then yeah, 96 uh, volts. So that's what that converter must be putting out. Or as a compliance voltage. They're almost certainly constant current driver. Okay, please excuse the crudity of the model. Didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Um, I just got an Amazon box here. You know, uh, roughly the right height. I tested I think it might give me like a 20 millimeters, uh, uh, 20, 25, I think, field of view. It depends how high I put the camera. I mean, it can be raised up. I can possibly uh, even cut the uh, sides so that they can bend so it can go lower for like really tiny boards and things like that. I think the minimum uh, focal length of my uh, camera lens uh, combination is like, you know, 20 20 millimeters or something like that it can get really close so because it's uh kind of tricky to get these things uh right you don't want to go to town you know lavishly building the thing um <laughs> before you actually test it so yeah uh there's just my crude implementation just to uh test this uh concept so i've got you know two strips top and bottom there one strip there and there they're just flat i mean you could like angle them in towards there and i've got no reflecting uh material at all so anyway i expect this to be very bright inside but it should hopefully evenly light uh my board from either direction but because there's no reflective stuff and it's not bouncing around the light's not really bouncing around in there i do expect some shadows on uh like larger components and things like that so you know on your caps and your connectors and things like that you'll probably get like shadows and and stuff uh coming across the larger parts and that might be helped with the reflective material but i just want to try this uh first up and see how it goes so i've got uh, six strips of uh six volts in series so that'll be uh 36 volts i haven't like, lashed down the wires i done haven't done anything yet it's it's a bit how you're doing um but see proof of concept let's go all right, so I'm going to have to use my higher voltage supply. I've got some white paper on the bottom because you want to have a nice white background when you do those uh, product photos. And uh, let's switch this bad boy on, shall we? 
and so I've got it set to maximum 40 volts but as I said it's going to be in constant current but it's going to uh, choose whatever compliance voltage is necessary to give uh, half amp so it should be about 36 volts and yep 35.7 <laughs> near enough so the, of course there's no current sharing resistors on those um, as you saw there's like there's like nothing on there so they're obviously doing the just uh the they're relying on the leds themselves for uh the current sharing and seems to be working quite nicely but uh anyway i'm looking down in there that looks really bright so let's have a look at the pattern as you can see that looks like really nice and even pattern on that on the bottom there it's not going to be perfect because there's not uh reflections of course i still expect those uh shadows but let's uh let's measure the light level there we have it. Oh yeah, 8,003. Uh, you've got to mold it. You had got an extra, added an extra zero on the end. 8,300 uh, uh, lux. Nice. So did I say lumens before? Um, yeah, lux. Um, lux. This is a lux meter. Very different. Lumens and lux are very different. And I've done a whole bunch of videos with Doug Ford on uh, all that or sort of different. So I have to leave those in. One goes for it now. So let's whack our board in and see what sort of photo we can get but here we go this is just using the camcorder and well i can't see this on the uh, lcd camcorder lcd too well but i can see the shadows on the sides of the board that's you know what i expected so yeah it's you know but that looks really nice for a first first shot at this without any reflect internal reflective material that looks really nice i'm going to take a photo and Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is taking a uh, constant aperture of uh, f10 on this thing. I've set the white balance to 5600, uh, so it's manually set up to match uh, those LEDs. So it should be really nice. And yeah, I know I could get like a stand or something like that, but I'm just going to take an overhead shot. That'll be good enough. So that's just like one just taken on my bench. Nothing special. Okay, now at the moment, it's uh, set so that the lens just doesn't go through. So it just allows me to sit it on top there. So I don't really need to have anything supporting it. It's 1 200th shutter speed. There we go. Okay, what I've got now is a ruler in there. And hopefully, or can I get close enough, bloody microphone um, on top. At some point in width, you're going to get reflections of the lights coming up into the lens. And this is a factor of the angle of the LEDs uh, compared to the, uh, you know, the height of the camera above the uh, subject under test. So it looks like, you know, that's, yeah, I can get a wider field of uh, view, but... Problem is, well, let's leave the camera where it is, and I'm, I'm lifting the box up, lifting the box up. No, nah, you still get it off reflective material like that. But let's say I put in something very reflective under here, which is my micro supply screen. There you go. You can see the LEDs in there looking straight down. That's actually going to be an awesome product shot. That's nicely lit. You know, there's still a few shadows in there, but yeah. Now, those reflections were actually coming from the side LEDs in the, this side of the box. So I could actually, you know, wire them individually and then be able to switch them in and out as uh, needs go. But yeah, at the moment, I'm getting the side reflections um, from these LEDs here and here. And I've confirmed that if I cover those, then uh, yeah, I don't get those reflections off the ruler. So... Right, so what I'm going to do now is get some owl foil. Um, yeah, it's a registered trademark, apparently, owl foil. How dare they? So I'm Australian. Anyway, um, yeah, get some owl foil, and that will provide a... Uh, none of that aluminum foil rubbish. Um, and that should provide a nice reflective surface uh, on the inside. Don't necessarily have to take it all the way down, because really, all I'm looking to do is get, like, the bounce... You know, I want it right down the bottom, so because uh, these are very wide angle uh, leads, so you know I want them to bounce off here but yeah anyway just you know generally bounce around and yep that seems to uh, stick in there nicely just with some uh, glue stick uh, stuff so yeah beauty that's actually uh, really easy and fun and that sticks down nicely I mean this is probably not a permanent <laughs> you know solution um, this looks like it's going to work so if it does you know I like probably 
put a bit more spit and polish into this thing. But uh, anyway, I just want to test uh, what difference the alfoil makes in terms of uh, internal reflections and things like that. Okay, at the moment I'm just going to do the walls. I'm not going to do the top. Uh, that could help as well because it's all bouncing around inside there. So the more reflectory stuff you have, the better. But we'll give that a bowl. There it is. It does actually look a little bit better. It has improved. It's not as, you know, the shadows aren't as harsh. Still not perfect, but not too shabby. Now, of course, the thing with uh, this is, is that the smaller the board gets, like I've got a Raspberry Pi in there, that's not really ultra uh, small board, but the smaller the board gets, then uh, for the same height here, you're going to get more uh, white space in your frame, and that's going to overexpose uh, your image, well, it's going to underexpose your board, uh, your camera's going to see more light, so it's going to, like, uh, underexpose the board, so of course, yeah, we can manually adjust your camera and all that, but at the moment, I'm just doing that uh, constant aperture, F 10 and just letting it uh, choose everything else. There you go, look at that. It's, it's not directly on because my microphone cable's in the way, I'm not directly overhead, but near enough. Um, that's that's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, there's a couple of shadows around the outside of the board, but geez, that looks pretty spiffy. Happy with that. Okay, I've added uh, some alfoil on the top there, you can see it just hanging around the edges. There you go, check that out. That's probably, it's probably the best yet. You can see the uh, antenna connector on the top left there. The, the shadow on that can is uh, pretty much gone away. So that looks, that looks really jazzy. I'm liking that. So there you go, there's my little uh, do-it-yourself light box. I rather like that. I know it's a bit how you're doing. It's pretty crude. I'll tidy it up a bit, but um, I'm pretty darn happy with that. And as I said, uh, yeah, I might like for really small, like tiny boards and stuff like that, it'd help if it was lower. And of course I can uh, enlarge the hole in the top so that the lens goes through a bit. Um, so that'll, uh, that'll help in that respect a little bit. But then I'm thinking, oh, maybe like cut up the sides or something, you know, like I'll figure out the exact length by uh, experimentation. You can even calculate it based on your, you know, your, all your lenses and your focal lengths and your sensor size and everything else. Um, but yeah, I like if I cut them up here, then I can like fold it out to make it uh, smaller or I can bring them together and then just put some tape around the uh, sides to, well, it'll probably just hold up on its own. Uh, I guess the only thing missing really is like a rig that uh, holds my uh, camera on top. But apart from that, I mean, there's like tons of light in there. So it's super fast shutter speed anyway. It's like 400th of a second or something uh, at F10. And it's just working great. So I'm, yeah, I'm happy with that. Not bad for just cobbling that together. But you've got to use good quality LEDs like this. You just get the, uh, like, one hung low brand off eBay. They're going to be absolute garbage. The color rendering index is going to be garbage. You've got to get, like, guaranteed name brand with guaranteed high color rendering index because it's important to get really accurate uh, coloring. But, um, yeah, like, th these little strips were, were perfect. I, like, hacked that together in minutes. It was just easy. And it's cheap. Uh, and, and simple, and it makes a really nice light box. Yeah, I, you know, I can get better photos if I manually, like, uh, adjust the shutter and aperture and everything else, set up the camera properly and stuff like that. And you can even, like, color calibrate your camera, and you can do, like, all sorts of whiz-bang photography stuff, but... Uh, just for shooting, nice uh, piece of B, or even product uh, prototypes. I mean, the uh, BM235 in here was just a bit too uh, big to be photographed in here, so I just lifted it up like a little bit to uh, take the photo. And here's a product uh, shot of that. That that was just first go. Haven't. Uh, haven't touched it, and there's very little in the way of reflections and things like that. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, but of course everyone's got an opinion on this sort of stuff. And as always, leave your comments down below over on the EV blog forum. Anyway, if you like that, please give it a big thumbs up. I hope you found it useful. Catch you next time.